Peter Ducey questions Karine Jean-Pierre on the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. The co-hosts of The View spout a litany of nonsense on their show. We have Facebook targeting those that are using the word recession and fact-checking them. And we have British police arresting citizens for retweeting certain posts on Twitter. All that and more here on The Ball Brad Show. Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. It is Tuesday, August 2nd, and I got a big smile on my face, and I'm feeling good, folks, because yesterday we hit a major milestone here on the Bald Brad channel. We've officially hit over 10,000 subscribers. In reality, over 10,000 American patriots have joined the cause to help get conservative thought and ideas out there to viewers who maybe will be red pilled or awakened by what we're producing here. So, thank you for joining the cause. For all those that have put the time in since the beginning, and even to the new viewers of always leaving a comment, hitting the like button, and watching our content, thank you once again, and here's to 10,000 more. With that being said, if you haven't joined the show, what are you doing? Hit that like and subscribe button. If you're over Rumble, give us a plus and a comment down below. And if you're listening on any of the podcast airwaves, Apple, Google, Spotify, Rumble, heck, we are everywhere, folks. Leave us a lovely five-star review. Not only would you be supporting conservative, but like I said, most importantly, you'd be helping getting conservative thought and ideas out there to new viewers. Who haven't seen our content or our channel so help and support would be greatly appreciated with that being said a lot of stuff coming out of the white house like always just mischaracterizing things redefining things like we saw on sunday if you haven't seen that episode go check that one out because it is a doozy of one where peter Ducey just exposes the white house for what they are which are liars just straight liars we have the view here saying so many nonsensical things that you almost don't know where to start in terms of the amount of crap that's just coming out of their mouths, just the sheer caca that's just flowing endlessly. It, it's truly, it's truly mind blowing. We have Facebook fact checking people on using their definition of what a recession is and actually going after economists and, and flagging them. It, it's so Orwellian, the time that we live in. And speaking of Orwellian, we have British police officers arresting citizens in England for reposting tweets that other people basically feel sensitive over. We'll leave it at that for now. When we get into jump into the story, we'll kind of give you all the details. But in all this craziness, you have White House Press Secretary here going up against the gladiator, Peter Ducey, on the Inflation Reduction Act and just right out of the gates, lying about the whole thing. And we're about to expose it along with Peter Ducey. Let's go ahead and roll it. Thanks, Green. Is President Biden thinking about pulling his support for the Inflation Reduction Act? No, because he promised it wasn't going to make it wasn't going to raise taxes on anybody making less than four hundred thousand dollars a year. But the Joint Committee on Taxation says that is not true. Well, that is incorrect. Oh, well, Peter, uh, that's incorrect. And I'm about to give you the facts, which obviously she isn't. We're going to come back to this clip, I promise. But I want to talk about that because she's lying once again on the podium. So President Joe Biden claimed over the weekend that the so-called Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 would not raise taxes on those making less than $400,000 per year. But a nonpartisan organization that crunched the numbers says it will. Quote, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 will lower health care costs for millions of Americans, Biden claimed in a tweet Sunday afternoon. And for the first time in a long time, make the largest corporations pay their fair share without any new taxes on people making under $400,000 a year. Uh-oh, though, as you can imagine, it's not true. Republicans on the Senate Finance Committee released data Saturday from the nonpartisan Joint Committee on Taxation, taxation showed that taxes will increase in calendar year 2023 for everyone under the plan, except for those making between 10000 and 30000 meaning if you're one of those that's making under $10,000, you will see 0.3% increase in your federal taxes. Those making between 30 and 75,000 will see a 0.1% increase. Those making between 75,000 and 100,000 is a 0.2% increase. Those making between 100,000 and 500,000, 0.3% increase. And those making between 500,000 to a million is 0.5. And those are making over a million, it's 0.6. So are these drastically big numbers? No, but this is an administration that's dealing with technicalities, right? On definitions. So why don't we deal with technicalities? Why don't we just start splitting hairs for my lack thereof? Why don't we do that a little bit, Kareen? Because now you're lying to the American people once again, and you're being called out for it. And so is the president. But this is what the, the Democrats are just going to glance over. They're not going to 
spot this out that they're lying to the American public about their taxes being increased. Let's see what other nonsense she has to espouse regarding all this. So the Joint Committee on Taxation, which you guys heralded as a, an effective body when you were selling that infrastructure package, is not to be trusted here. I love Peter. I said it is not correct because I will give you why it's not correct, because it is incomplete. Oh, uh, it's the JCT uh, 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 report that we're currently seeing is incomplete Who because thought? it omits uh, the actual benefits uh, that Americans would receive when it comes to pres prescription drugs, when it comes comes to uh, the en lowering energy costs like utility bills, it does not include that. And uh, we have some experts. Don't have to trust me. We have no. experts that say. Don't oh, worry, Green. We're not trusting you. <laughs> hey, you don't have to trust me. <laughs> we don't trust me. We just heard what you had to say. I'm almost crying. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> Just, you don't have to trust me. Look, she redefined what a recession was. There's no way in hell we're going to trust anything that's coming out of your mouth. And quite frankly, you're picking and choosing the people that you want to highlight here while you have a nonpartisan group coming out and saying, hey, look, the numbers, this is what they show. This is what they are. But hey, don't worry, folks. It, it's all incomplete. Yeah, that's that's everything's incomplete with the Democrat Party. That's how they get you to spend more money. Mm -hmm. The exact same. Kimberly, Kimberly Clausing from UCLA. Many key factors are left out in these tables, including importantly, the effect of deficit reduction, the positive effects of the spending on clean energy and the benefits from low drug prices. And I just stated oh, the benefits. Seth Conlin, Center for American Progress. Republicans don't mention that JCT analysis includes an Im Im imputation of corporate taxes, i.e. the 15% minimum uh, on corporations with uh, less than 1 billion of profits to income groups, but does not include the major provisions that benefit people, including the tax cuts and uh, drug uh, savings, prescription drug space savings to be specific. She, she struggled to get that out. I guarantee you she doesn't know what the hell she just said. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't know what the hell she just said. For some reason, she's bringing up corporations. What the conversation wasn't about corporations, about individuals, of which Joe Biden said anybody making under $400,000 wouldn't see a federal increase in their taxes. Turns out there is. It's not a drastic one. And the only reason I'm highlighting this, and so is Peter, is because she's the one that wants to deal with technicalities. Well, that's not the definition. That's not exactly what it says verbatim. So now that we're dealing with verbatim and technicality on things, why don't we go ahead and deal with that kind of political warfare? Because this is what happens when now we can split hairs on 0.1%, 0.3%, 0.6%, whatever it is, that's what's happening in the American public. And now they're lying about it. Penn Wharton, where the president used to, uh, University of Pennsylvania used to be a professor there. Uh, Penn Wharton budget model says this Inflation Reduction Act is actually gonna increase inflation in 2024. Does the president worry about that? So we agree with Senator Manchin. You heard him a couple of times yesterday and disagree with Penn Wharton as a as 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 do a number of qualified experts, which I'm happy to read out. But I you know, I do want to say that it is uh, Watch how she's ironic, been this. Uh, that uh, uh, congressional Republicans are complaining or are uh, have a false a false outrage uh, on on this Inflation Reduction Act uh, that is actually going to do something and help the American people lower cost uh, when, you know, when they have offered really nothing to do that. Uh, what they have offered is to increase taxes on Americans making less than $100,000 a year. And what they have uh, introduced is actually sunsetting Medicare and sunsetting uh, also um, uh, Social Security after five years. And that's how they want to uh, deal with uh, uh, how to help the American people. We are talking about doing the complete, absolute complete opposite. And just no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Democrats have been engaged with these conversations that Republicans are having as well. And there's a conversation to be had of what they're doing. I'm not saying I'm fully on board with what they're doing. I think the government needs to stop spending our damn money in the way that it's doing. Look, I'm all for people getting cheaper medical and cheaper drugs and all that stuff. But the stuff that she's peddling here of trying to point out the flaws of the Republicans when you have a massive flaw sitting right there in the front of your freaking face where, look, they're focused on the camp, not on the camel, but rather on all these gnats, meaning what the Republicans doing, the camel is the damn bill you're trying to pass, the damn freaking reduction act that's not really reducing anything. If anything, it's going to increase inflation over the next course of matter of a few years. But we're not going to talk about all that because it's cheaper, right? All this stuff's cheaper. 
it's always proposed to us that something's cheaper in the short term, but then when you go to the long term, oh crap, oh we just uh <laughs> we just increased your taxes over the long term. Oh crap, we just increased the deficit over a long term. But you know, you have Manchin coming out saying, Oh, well, we just got done paying off three hundred billion dollars. Look, just because Manchin is more of like a middle Democrat doesn't mean the guy's right all the time. Doesn't mean he, he doesn't have his own issues that he wants to throw in there. Doesn't mean he has he doesn't have his own agenda, which Bernie Sanders has talked about. Doesn't mean I agree with what Bernie Sanders says, but there is an agenda there. He is part of the Democrat Party. So it's not like just because you use him as an example doesn't mean that we're all on board with whatever Manchin does, that he's a freaking Republican. No, 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 no. But this is stuff she's going to push. She's going to try to peddle all these things that Republicans are doing. Not saying we all agree with what they're doing, but this is how she gets and dodges around. The main question that Peter Ducey brought to her, never really answered it, never really acknowledged it, just pretended like, oh, well, we don't agree with those experts, but let me choose the experts that agree with us. The same type of experts that come on the stage the other week. Brian Deese in 2008 says that two consecutive quarters of GDP growth of negative GDP growth is a recession and just chauffeurs them up back out again while he's struggling, having those same words, except flipping a few of them and saying basically, well, now that's not a recession. Even he struggled getting it out on tape, but this is the type of people they want to chauffeur out. So no, Kareen, we're not gonna believe anything you say. Uh, it's no. been three days now since a Chinese official publicly threatened to murder Speaker Pelosi. Where is the president? coming out to respond to, at the very least, say, don't do that. Well, first, we've talked, Kirby was just here talking about how, um, I have not seen those reports, so I'm uh, just going to say. They were going to maybe shoot down her plane, or that they would, oh. it would be within their rights to okay. shoot down her plane. All right. Well, we have talked about that. We have said that there's no need for this type of saber rattling. It is unnecessary. Uh, the president has been very clear. There's been no change uh, in the uh, One China policy. Uh, we continue to support the Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, what we are seeing. Uh, folks, folks, we see this all the time. Can you just answer the question just one time, please? It's, it's not even a got you question from Peter Ducey. It's not even a question of like, I'm attacking you right now or I'm, I'm spotting out your hypocrisy. He was just asking, where's the president at? Can we get the president on a podium acknowledging what they said and saying how it's bad and actually acting like you're putting America first rather than the Chinese government or some other entity out there? Can you just, is everybody with me on this? Is it, I mean, how many times have we done an episode where she just can't answer a damn question? She did one earlier. The, the first question Peter Ducey asked, she gave an answer of no. Great. Cool. Awesome. Let's move on here. But when it comes to China, you know, it's the Democrat Party and like the NBA and, and certain celebrities, the way they dance around certain things, little sus and a little suspicious from uh, from, uh, you know, what we're talking about right now. And to be clear, uh, speak what we're talking about right now, you mean we're talking about China freaking trying to basically assassinate or kill the Speaker of the House? <laughs> Let's acknowledge who we're talking about here rather than dancing it around like I, I just freaking said it. You know, oh, well, you know who we're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're talking about China killing the Speaker of the House for going to another country called Taiwan that the Chinese government doesn't want to acknowledge as a separate country. So <laughs> it's just, you can't make this up in real time. Confirmed, as you heard from my colleague just moments ago, uh, that she is going to Taiwan. It has not been confirmed. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, the history of this of congressional members going to Taiwan is not uncommon. It is something that has happened in the past. Uh, and uh, and so, again, nothing has changed. And uh, the president has made that very, very clear. Go ahead, Steve. I mean, he hasn't really made it that clear, right? Which is why Peter Ducey is raising that question. I know she wants to say that he's made it super clear, but he has been super soft, very soft on China. Folks, the entire globe was shut down over COVID-19. Where's the backlash on that from the president, the United Nations? That's all about these humanitarian things that wants to take all our money, of which I think we pay like 20% or more of the United Nations funding. But, you know, other countries don't want to contribute as much, nor is there any ramifications on China right now for what's going on. Then basically having certain plans to invade Taiwan as well, having this type of rhetoric that we're going to blow her plane out of the sky. And you got this president just sitting back. Uh, it was China. I think Hunter has investments in there. Oh, crap, Mr. President, we got to get you out of this room. What are you talking about? Hunter has investments in China. No, he doesn't, you crazy old man. But no, that's the stuff they're going to peddle. That's the stuff they're going to push and completely lie to the American public. A little bit more on the whole idea of the Reduction Act here. It says here from Senator John Corrin, a Republican of Texas, responded to Biden's tweet by writing that the plan would subsidize the rich at the expense of the poor. 
Quote, it will subsidize the wealthy at the expense of working class families, raise taxes on workers, making as little as 10,000 a year and unleash an army of IRS agents on taxpayers. Oh, and it won't reduce inflation anytime soon. A study from Penn Wharton researchers found that Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 would actually very slightly increase inflation until 2024 and decrease inflation thereafter. These point estimates are statistically indistinguishable from zero. Basically, what they're showing is an increase in GDP of 0.2% by 2050 and how basically the project would have no impact on GDP by 2031. And the statistics, the numbers are so small. That's why they're saying in terms of that realm that they're virtually zero. So it doesn't really do much, to be honest, and it doesn't really help much, to be honest, either. It's just another mechanism of government spending that they're trying to do right now. And in my opinion, I do think it would lead to inflation because you're spending that money. I don't think you're going to see that in return with the direction of inflation, with the direction of the economy going and where our deficit is currently at in modern times. So things are only going to get worse by 2050. We'll see. They always point to as a short term and not necessarily the long terms. And studies here are pointing it's going to increase inflation slightly in the long term. Well, in other news, speaking of just news that rattles your brain, you try to wrap your head around what people say. We have the view here, Joy Behar saying conservatives will turn this country into Hungary and North Korea if they get their way. It, I, I, I don't even know where to start. We might as well just start with the clip here from The View and kind of break it down as we go because they say so many asinine things, your head's going to spin. Wade has sparked concerns that access to contraception and gay rights could also be endangered. We all know that. But are Republicans themselves in danger of overplaying their hand by moving too far to the right too fast and possibly alienating moderate voters? Mm. Interestingly, this question comes just as voters in Kansas head to the polls to decide whether to remove abortion protections from their state constitution. Ugh. So, oh, I mean, God. what's Just happening terrible. with the party? And, you know, I, for me, the shocker was them sort of <laughs> not voting for rights for uh, vets yeah. for health benefit. I mean, right. it's like, how do you say no to the people who have been keeping the country safe so that you can do your job? Over there in Washington, so how is this working? Wounded veterans, They're, they have just veterans in general. Victims. What the hell? Well, you know, they always say that the Democrats shoot themselves in the foot, but now it looks like the Republicans are doing that to themselves. I mean, they could be running on high inflation. They could be running on gas prices, which happen to be coming down. And none of this is Biden's fault, by the way. But it doesn't matter. They okay. Okay. Case in point, we're a minute fourteen, and it's just the nonsense that's been spewed out. This idea of running on inflation, we are running on inflation. The idea of the economy, we are running on all these things that you say, and we're not shooting ourselves in the foot. I mean, this whole idea of what they're talking about in terms of the bill that's being proposed with the veterans is the Democrats have done some wonkery accounting stuff with this whole thing, where they basically, in a nutshell, did an accounting trick that the Congressional Budget Office said could add a minimum of $275 billion in unrelated spending over the next decade. So I love how this idea, it's all Republicans fault. Whoopi Goldberg can't wrap her head around. Oh my God, they're not supporting the veterans. Like they always support the vets. This is crazy. They're shooting themselves in the foot. We still want to support the vets. All Republicans want to support the vets. But when you're trying to throw in $275 billion of unrelated spending over the next decade, that's not okay. I think the Democrats forget and politicians in general forget that we're over $20 trillion in debt, but let's just keep throwing freaking more money. If you want to give money to the vets, then just give money to the vets. That's what we're all on board for. But if you're throwing in all this money with a bill that's intended to provide $400 billion for vets who suffered from certain ranges of ailments and exposure from Afghanistan and Iraq, but then at the same time, you're just going to throw, ah, we might as well throw $275 billion of other stuff in it as well. No, 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 that's not okay. But this is the type of stuff they're going to pedal and push from the view and lie and cherry pick on certain things without actually giving the audience and the viewers the details. We're not going to do that here on the Bald Brad Show. We're going to bring you the details. $400 billion of the vets, $275, uh, $275 billion going to unrelated expenses. Look, I'm sorry. If you want to support the vets, support them. We don't need $275 billion to be thrown in a package that should be just going to the vets in general. If you doesn't want to talk about it, 
Let's go ahead and roll into other stuff that they say here. It could still convince a lot of people that it's the Democrats' fault, but instead of doing that, it is. they're taking away benefits from wounded veterans. They're supposed to be pro-military. They're talking no, they're about not. abortion rights, which that ship is passed already. You know mm -hmm. that that ship is. They're, they're not taking away the benefits. No, they're not doing any of that. So let's let's not lie here, Joy. Let's not lie. It's over. People already decided that they want women to have free choice on this mm -hmm. and also on um, on the gay rights. It's mm -hmm. like enough already with the gay rights uh, issue. And so what they do is they concentrate on the wrong thing. So what the hell is she talking about? What gay rights issue is she talking about? Help me here. Are we talking about the don't say gay bill still? I'm confused on what she's talking about. There's like this conspiracy theory among Democrats that Clarence Thomas and like others want to go after marriage and gays and and interracial stuff. It's just it's so odd to me the type of stuff they push. I don't have a clue what she's talking about in terms of these gay rights or whatever. Do what do whatever you want. Just stop trying to push this certain gender identity theory upon our children, like you see in Florida, which Ron DeSantis stopped is trying to stop do uh, with them pushing and peddling this drag queen stuff upon innocent little children having their you know what hanging out everywhere wild so let's get let, let's continue well, maybe there's hope for the democrats because of the stupidity of the republicans well and overplaying your hand oh yeah put on the clap meter Joy, uh, Whoopi, when you gotta be kidding Wait, she's all giddy your... she's giddy over that statement what like you gotta be in some other realm in reality which quite frankly we see a lot from the progressive left and democrat party in terms of what's really taking place around us Oh, I say it all the time. She's getting over the statement. You have an immigration crisis happening in the U.S.-Mexico border. Drug cartels coming through. Terrorists are coming through. Sex trafficking. Joe Biden's literally created a multi-billion dollar business at the southern border for the drug cartel, for sex traffickers, for smugglers, for terrorists. And she's going to say the Republicans, honestly, really? You have a foreign policy issue. China's trying to blow our Speaker of the House out of the sky. They want to invade Taiwan. Iran wants to build a nuclear weapon and blow up Israel, the rest of the West. Like you have Afghanistan, the Taliban coming back. You have inflation going through the roof. Gas prices going through the roof. Grocery bills going through the roof. But yeah, it, it, somehow, somehow this is the Republicans. It's so, it's so mind bending. Pan, there's literally a moderate Virginia Republican uh, who's a strategist who said, I feel like we're on this seesaw where one party sort of gets the upper hand on social cultural issues. Then they overplay that hand and Republicans have taken it too far this yeah, time. Yeah. When you look at it, the GOP <clears throat> position on abortion always had exceptions. They always had rape, incest, and the life of the mother. Mm -hmm. And now you've got 13 states that have uh, ceased nearly all abortions. Eight of them have no exception for rape or incest. Now, that is not at all in line with the, their constituents because 73% of Americans favor legal abortion if a woman's life or health were at risk. Mm -hmm. Six did you see what she did there? She's talking about 73% of Americans, but she's correlating this to the Republican Party. So if you're talking about 73% of Americans, that's not talking about 73% of the Republican Party and their constituents. So this is what they do here on The View. This is how they manipulate the data and they do it really fast so that you don't have to acknowledge it or that it just gets slipped under the rug there. I'm like, oh, I didn't actually pay attention to what she said. So this is what they do. And this is the type of stuff that they present to their viewers and try to lie to people. And I love this whole aspect of them talking about incest and rape, which accounts for depending on which one you're talking about, the incest or the rape, if you combine them both, it's less than 1% of the causes of abortion. If you split them up, you're looking at 0.5% or the other way, 0.5 as well. So virtually almost all abortions aren't because of incest and rape. The vast majority of them are just, I know a lot of people don't want to admit it. They're just because of it's an inconvenience because you don't have the money to sit there and help raise a child. You're not in a current situation to raise a child either. So majority are because of just lack of inconvenience but this is what they're doing twisting data spinning it and manipulating it to their viewers and they're trying to do it with all of us but luckily we're here at the bald brad show we've subscribed so we're on point here of what the hell is going on 69 percent say it should be legal if the pregnancy is the result of rape 79 percent of republicans say there are some cases abortion should be legal and others are illegal they brought it back to the that doesn't mean overturning that, of that number does not mean that it's incest and rape even she's not being specific in what it is I would like to know what those 79% of Republicans are talking about, that there should be some sort of limitation on it or not. 
Is that incest? Is it rape? What are we talking about here? Be specific, but they're not going to because they have an agenda. They have a narrative that they want to push. Wade, but now you have the states deciding you can't go to another state, which just flies in the face of what they're saying when they say a state. What about contraception? And that's the kind of stuff that happens in Cuba. That's the kind of stuff that happens in North Korea, where they don't let people travel out of, you know, out of those countries. But look, I, I do think. What? We're talking about doing certain state to state. I don't know even what you would call it, medical care, transactions, whatever it may be. And even on, on some of those levels, there are laws on the books or certain limitations that you can go and do from state to state. Vastly, <laughs> vastly different than them talking about Cuba, North Korea, <laughs> wherever, from not leaving the country. Way different than what we're talking about here. <laughs> not even the same ballpark. Look, if you want to make a rough analogy, and I mean rough, I'm all on board for rough analogies. This is this is not even a, a an analogy at all. This is just actual just idiocracy that's being spewed right now. I'll leave it up to Anna Navarro to, to just continue the nonsense. The party has uh, I think the party's gone crazy, frankly, to tell you the truth, because I you know, I, and I think what they've decided I can't to do keep pausing is it. manufacture because these are manufactured culture wars. They are oh not God. real issues. As Billy Porter said here on Friday, the, the issue is gone. They've there's the change has happened when it comes to LGBTQ rights. So what are we seeing? We are seeing some backlash. Just last week, <clears throat> Matt Gates. Uh, body shamed, fat shamed, uh, uh, an activist, a 19-year-old activist, yeah. Olivia Juliana on Twitter. What does she and do? She, what does she do? She's raised over $2 million because of that for abortion rights and for, to help women get abortion. So if you are, you what is, uh, look, he, he did call he did call people fat. He, I mean, he was he was presented with it. Somebody said something, do you know, do you want to take it back? And he said no. And he, you know, he said his piece. It's not okay to be unhealthy. All right. It's not. I know that we have this certain culture and stigma that's trying to be produced here by the left, that it's okay to be obese and that it's healthy and, and, and again, push all this nonsensical things that's not reality. You talk to any physician out there, they're going to say it's not okay to be overweight. Anna Navarro is overweight. I, she is. Her, for her size, like meaning her height, that is not the amount of weight that you should be carrying that is healthy. It's just not. I'm not fat shaming her. I don't want her to be obese. I don't want her to be carrying all that weight. I want her to be healthy. I don't agree with her viewpoint. I don't agree with anything, but it's not okay. It's not right to be pushing a certain agenda that is just quite frankly false, telling people they should be overweight. You might not like what Matt Gates said, but how does being obese and correlating that into ultimately abortion, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a stretch for me. You want to see a direct and a tangible cause and effect? That's what tells you how much that's energizing the Democratic base to get out, mm -hmm. how outraged people are, and how people are feeling about it. They're putting their money there. Yeah. And then we're seeing what we're seeing in Florida, I can't even comprehend. Mm -hmm. This is a state where we have a housing crisis. This is a state where we have an insurance crisis. This is a state where we have a climate crisis. And instead, Ron DeSantis is focused. We have a climate crisis? <laughs> we have a housing crisis because everybody's fleeing to the state of Florida. We have insurance policy crisis. I don't even know what the hell she's talking about there, actually. I, I literally don't have a clue. Oh, we have a climate crisis. See, climate's only local to certain states. You know, that's how that works. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Come on. Focusing, to fo uh, uh, focusing on drag queens. And so listen, yes, do I think a five-year-old should be at a drag show? No. But you know what? If you are that's for good. parental choice when it comes to your kid wearing a mask, to school. If you are for parental choice when it comes to your kid learning about slavery and learning the true history of this country, then why in the hell can't you be about parental choice on whether you take your kid to a drag show or not? Well, yeah. that's true. This is, you know Some of the drag shows are happening on school campuses without administration's knowledge. So no, that's, that's not okay. And many parents don't want that. Many parents have vocalized that they don't want that. So if you want to talk about polls, the vast, vast, like in the 70th percentile, the high 70th percentile of parents in Florida don't want their kids being presented to that type of behavior in front of their child, whether it's at school or anywhere else. Furthermore, parents are bringing their kids to drag shows in bars in which you're not even supposed to be in there as an adolescent or somebody under the age of 21, even under supervision of a parent or guardian. 
that's 21 years of age as well in some of these bars and some of them. So this stuff that he's doing is what his constituents want. But I know the Democrat Party isn't beholden to their constituents. They're only beholden to the power that they want to put and regulate under the American people. Or should I say over the American people? You're cherry picking this. I'm, 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 listen, I, I looked at the, at the, at the top causes of uh, endangerment for children, of children's death. It's firearms. It's car accidents. You know, all it's drowning. Right, it is Anna. not drag queen. Right, I'm yet Anna. to see a kid who dies from being a to a drag queen. All of that is true. And I think that what we're saying here is true. But since 190 Republicans just voted against birth, about, against birth control, I mean, this is a slippery slope. Now we're getting into everybody's business now, you know. But I still think that this is a tricky in the November. With all of what we just said, I still say that prices for yeah. food and clothing and housing and everything. Inflation. Those, what do they call those? Tabletop uh, issues? Kitchen table. Kitchen, kitchen table, table uh, things. I think that people are still going to be concerned about what is right in front of them. Yep. And these bigger issues are going to just get worse and worse Which and worse. Which is why and Republicans should I be focusing that frightening, frankly. on that. But I, listen, it's easy for me to say it because I don't have a problem with money. I mean, I... This is, this is how disconnected they are. Oh, Republicans should be focused on that. Look at any Republican outlet. Just... This is, they're so out of touch. You don't have to go far. Just literally type in Fox News at the top banner up there, right under it, you'll see kind of hot topics. One of them has been a recession for like the last like week and a half. Inflation's like permanently up there. Immigration is on there. What do you mean we're not talking about these things? Look at the catalog here at the Bald Brad Show. We've talked about recession. We've talked about inflation. We've talked about illegal immigration since the inception of the show. Look at the Daily Wire, the exact same thing. Look at the Blaze TV, the Blaze media outlets. They're doing the exact same thing. Where's she coming up with all this? It's as if she doesn't turn on a TV or, or listen to any sort of Republican or conservative outlets. It's it's mind blowing. I admit to me. that we're doing very well on this show, but there are people out there, and I've been there the where I was on a, I was on unemployment insurance. It saved my life when I was broke, and I've been broke many times, and I know how that feels. But trust me, these other issues are horrifying. They will turn this country into Hungary and North Korea, as you say, if they have a, if they have their I think way. People, I think people are smart enough to know what. <laughs> what's right in front of them and the things that surround them. Because things that surround you also have a way of creeping in. Mm -hmm. So people are well aware. They just have to make a decision. What are the things and who are the people who best serve your interest in oh. the America you what? Can I say <laughs> one more thing? Sure. What are the Republicans going to do about inflation? and about gas prices. That's the question you have to ask yourself. Okay, the Democrats are, are disappointing you on inflation. Ask the Democrats, the Republicans, what are you going to do? Ask the same. Or, it's a joy. They're not or, even focusing on inflation and they're not focusing on gas prices. They're focusing on drag queens. Well, that's the same. I mean, well, here's the, here's, here's the ridiculous. bottom line. Listen, November is when you will have... You want to help with inflation really quick? Just go ahead and increase domestic oil production. Right? You get the cost of fuel down. You get the cost of your freight down. The freight is delivering those goods and services. That helps a lot. Furthermore, you can help with ultimately getting money back in the Americans' pockets that they can actually spend on groceries, which will help with the supply and demand issue. Furthermore, you can also figure out the supply issue by working with our NATO allies, working with just our allies in general of creating some sort of an agreement between the countries on certain goods and services. There's a lot of things that can be done. Just Joe Biden just doesn't want to do it. Again, the main thing that's happening here, at least one of the main things, is fuel prices and that you could in, like decrease a lot of the goods and services, the price of those goods and services at the grocery store, at the pump, by just getting fuel prices down. As of today, it is 81 cents down, which is great. That is a good thing, but it's not anywhere near it should be. And then pushing this climate agenda isn't going to help the cause. So this whole inflation thing that's caused by Joe Biden pumping out stimulus checks. How about we don't do that when Republicans in office? That's going to help inflation. How about dealing with that aspect of constantly the government paying for everybody's damn things, wanting handouts left and right? That's going to help curb inflation as well. But look, Democrats have done a lot of damage, folks. The next Republican who's in office is going to have a lot of work and a lot of cleanup to do regarding what Democrats have done. have to make a decision. Keep an eye out on what's going on, because as you see, what pissed you off a month and a half ago may not be pissing you off in two months. We don't know. But find out what the core is of your beliefs for your country, for yourself in this country. This is all up to us. This is all oh our responsibility. We can shuff it off to this group or shuff it off to that group, oh. but it comes down to us.
Where do you stand and how do you stand in America? Where do you stand and how do you stand in America? Well, I don't stand with the Democrat Party. Let me tell you that much. I love how they're like, well, just look around. See see what your table counter issue is according to Joy Bayhart. You mean the kitchen table issues, Joy? Act like you've been around for a while, for the love of God. <laughs> so, and, and like I said, it, it's all foo Them pushing this stuff. Republicans are always the problem. It's never the Democrats. While at the same time, they're going to sit there and say, well, look at what's going on. Look, Democrats with the inflation and, the, and the everything else. Where's the talk about illegal immigration? Where's the talk about recession? Where's the talk about Iran? Where's the talk about China? Where's the talk about Hunter Biden? Where's the talk about Joe Biden? Where's the talk about not increasing domestic oil production? Like, where's the conversations about all this? The very things that you've caused your party has caused, they don't want to bring that up because if they do, nobody's going to go out and vote for their party and it goes against their cause. Well, speaking about going against the cause, you have Republicans rising up, going against the whole idea of fact checking that's being misused and mishandled by Facebook. So we have an economist here slams Facebook for absolutely Orwellian fact checking, upholding Biden's recession denial. Now, if you recall, and I'm sure many of you either who watch the show or some other outlet have heard that Karine Jean-Pierre was literally redefining what a recession was. I mean, you had progressive leftists just streaming to Wikipedia to ultimately redefine it in real time. I mean, they had hours upon hours of people trying to redefine Wikipedia's definition of what a recession was. We did a short here on the Bold Brad show where we just showed, wasn't me personally, but we used a clip of another person showing what the definition was in the financial dictionary of what a recession was. Then I went and used what other countries classify as a recession as well, per what we utilize here in gross domestic product of two negative quarters. So we, we exposed it. They don't want to admit it. But now when we use the actual definition of what a recession is, Facebook's fact checking people. It's crazy. Social media giant Facebook is taking heat for its censorship policies yet again. This time, after a senior research fellow from the American Institute of Economic Research, he thinks he knows a little bit something, something about research there in terms of economics, I would say so, was flagged for setting the record straight on what he constitutes as a recession. Quote, it's absolutely Orwellian, economist Philip Magnus told Fox and, First, but, uh, Fox and Friends First of the censorship attempt on Monday. This is what he had to say. Sticking with this economic front and also uh, with a social media tie-in, Facebook is now policing individuals who question the White House's definition of recession, fact-checking industry experts speaking out on the state of the economy. That top economist, research and education director at the American Institute for Economic Research, Crazy. Phil Magnus, joins me now. Philip, good morning to you. Let's start at the beginning. What did you say in your Facebook post that Facebook fact-checked? Well, I basically uh, shared a screenshot of the White House's own website where they attempted to redefine the concept of inflation. And economists have traditionally defined this uh, term as two consecutive uh, quarters of negative GDP growth, which is the old textbook definition for inflation. It's kind of a shorthand, but it's something that works. It describes almost all recessions we've had in the United States over the past century. And yet, uh, just sharing that caused Facebook to flag it and put a uh, fact check notice on my page. And you were fact checked for just stating the textbook yeah, definition of inflation. So when the fact checkers get it wrong and fact check something that is accurate, where does that leave us? I guess that's why you're calling this Orwellian. It is absolutely Orwellian. It is a political entity. It was point of fact in this case that partners up with Facebook, stepping in and basically carrying water on behalf of the White House for political reasons, not economic reasons. Well, have you complained to Facebook at all? Sometimes when they do something this egregious and it gets media attention, they say, well, it was labeled, uh, you know, misinformation and error. Has that happened yet? Have you had any conversation with the platform? I've had nothing in return from them. I, I did share a, a screenshot of the post, basically saying that sunlight's the best disinfectant here, and it uh, it did go viral, so it drew attention to the fact that they're using uh, political talking points in lieu of, uh, of actual fact-checking. They're wow. stepping in and becoming partisan actors here. Yeah, they certainly are. This is truly unbelievable. It's not the first time something like this happened. It certainly won't be the last. Uh, but because you're here, uh, we, have, we want to use your resources in, in two ways and ask you about the economy. 
economy. What do you make of this uh, Inflation Reduction Act? Uh, we were just talking about the Penn Wharton model that said that it would slightly increase inflation. What do you think about that? Is that true? Not according to Jen Psaki. Right. I am absolutely concerned about it. I think the White House is playing catch up. Uh, the real problem here is they ignored inflation as an issue for basically the last year. They were calling it transitory. They were pretending it would just magically go away. And now uh, they're they're finding themselves uh, above 9 percent uh, year over year as the uh, projected inflation rate. And they're trying to play catch up, but they're playing catch up very ineffectively, just going back to the old uh, tax and spend habits that have been the Joe Biden agenda from the beginning. So if you were advising the president right now, what, what would you tell him to do with 9.1% inflation? Quit your job. First off, I would say we need to be honest with the American people. Quit uh, this almost like Nixonian language of trying to manipulate the terms, manipulate what's actually going on. We need to confront the fact that inflation is occurring right now. And part of that is because we fell asleep on the watch. Uh, the Federal Reserve kind of fell asleep. Its uh, historical mandate has always been price stability, and it strayed away from that into things like climate change and diversity, uh, DEI initiatives, yep. uh, ESG, ESG investing. Yep. And because of that, it really Kind of missed the mark. It missed uh, all the emerging evidence that we had an inflationary crisis underway. So simply getting back to the fact of that uh, and acknowledging it, confronting it honestly, is the first step the White House yeah. needs to take. And he makes great points here, and, and it's kind of in reference to the kind of the Great Reset, this climate initiative that all these companies are doing. Furthermore, what our own government's doing, and the lack of initiative from the Federal Reserve, where they should have been increasing rates early on. Honestly, even during Trump's time, I know Trump didn't like the fact that they were even talking about increasing interest rates. And that's something I disapproved from the Trump administration of. Sometimes you need that to help ultimately regulate the economy. You don't want it to increase too much because it could spiral into inflation. You don't want it to decrease too much as well because you could spiral into a recession and also have inflation at the same time, which is kind of what we're seeing right now. So that's what I didn't like from Trump because he didn't understand that stability and ultimately the power the Federal Reserve have. I know that kind of has a bad PR look in terms of administration of where things are going, but that's just a fluctuation of where the economy is at and they should have been taking more of an initiative. And by the way, the Federal Reserve admits as much as that, that they should have caught on to this a lot quicker. But when you have the focus on this climate change, on spending, want to put like $400 billion here, $275 billion there, cash out stimulus checks, do all these things. And then they're sitting here going like, oh, well, we're just in a transitory period. We're transitioning. Yes, like we've all been saying since Biden's been in office, we're transitioning into something not good, which is called inflation, which is called recession. We've been saying it for quite some time. The White House doesn't want to admit it, didn't want to admit it back then. Now they're redefining it so they could fit their narrative of not admitting it. And so now they still hold true according to the fact checkers on Facebook, which is mind blowing. It's remember how Facebook was like, oh, well, we want to curb like all this Russian uh, disinformation on Facebook. We want to curb all these people spreading conspiracy theories and falsehoods and stuff like that. We've literally gotten to the point where you can actually say a fact on social media, not just Facebook, but anywhere, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, whatever it may be. You can actually say like a man is a man, like an actual biological man is a man and be removed off Twitter, off Facebook, off these social media platforms. It's literally Orwell's 1984 in real time. If you haven't read that or it's been a while, pick it up again because God, you are seeing just the moves that the Democrat party and progressive left are putting in place to make that book freaking true. It is so mind bending, so mind blowing on how much he's gotten right from 1984, the novel to 2022. It is like I said, it is just mind blowing and Democrats aren't awakened to it. As you just saw from the view, as you just see from what these social media giants are doing. And I, I love that he talked about the ESG scores because banks are doing this right now, actively, actively declining people, or the pursuit of declining people for certain things, investments, loans, things like that, credit cards, because their GS or their ESG score is so low. And I got a lot of the information from Glenn Beck from his novel, The Great Reset, on how that has a possibility of being utilized to get loans, to get certain credit in order to obtain certain things from these banks if your environmental score or if you're not being conscious of the things that you say and do, all this stuff gets taken into account. You can have a low score and ultimately the banks will not serve you because ultimately the elites don't want the banks to serve you. Crazy book. Again, it's called The Great Reset by Glenn Beck. I think it is worth the read. It is a quick read. Like I said, I almost read it in one evening myself. Now, speaking of Orwellian things taking place, we have British law enforcement officials 
placing a man in handcuffs last week for allegedly retweeting a post on Twitter that made another person get this anxious. This is where we're at as a society. The reason why I want to highlight this is not necessarily what's going on in England, but the potential of what could happen here with what the progressive left wants to happen here. The progressive left wants this. See, they want you in Twitter jail, both metaphorically, but also literally, because they take the words that you say as harmful, like you physically hurt them with your words. We're seeing it in real time in England right now. There's a video clip of this whole shenanigans happening here with this police department. And you can see the citizens just completely just baffled by what the heck's going on with these police officers arresting them for a Twitter post, an actual Twitter post. Let's go ahead and roll it. No, the British Hampshire police would realise how ridiculous this is. It is, of course. I'm glad it's come to this. What, 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 did, what, did, what did it need to come to? Tell, what, tell us why what, you what? escalated it to this level, because I don't understand. I posted something that he posted. You come to arrest me, you don't arrest him. Why has it come to this? Why am I in cuffs? Because of something he shared, then I shared. Because someone has been caused, obviously, anxiety based upon your social media site. That's not no, I mean, that that is so wild that after everything that's gone and happened in human history of silencing and just ultimately being a power hungry government over its citizens, that this stuff is still happening. And it should scare all of you that there is a potential where a government can go usurpatious upon its people. And here it's obviously freedom of speech with Basically, everybody lacks in a nutshell other than America. But again, if this can overflow into American society, which it has with the progressive left and in some parts has infiltrated the Democrat Party, then now you're looking at not only freedom of speech, but also your Second Amendment rights, your Second Amendment rights being taken away or being infringed upon. You just had the House pass the bill to remove certain semi-automatic weapons, firearms, pistols, shotguns from the public. I don't think it's going to pass in the Senate and it sure as hell is it going to pass in the Supreme Court because of the prior cases that have been established before it? But that is why we need the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment ultimately not only protects the first, but in a nutshell also enforces it as well because of that protection, which is why we have the logo here at the Bald Brad Show, where you have the firearm, the Second Amendment, and then you have the mic, the First Amendment, the second protects the first. And if you have the first, you don't really need to use the second, but it's there as a precautionary measure. So... <laughs> This the guy's baffled as you heard in the clip, and you had you had the officer say someone has been caused anxiety based upon your social media post. Who cares? Don't read the post then if you have anxiety. Don't be on social media if you're getting anxiety from things. But this is why the left wants trigger warnings before all the Disney films, right? They want trigger warnings before uh, what was that Thor: Love and Thunder because you had Natalie Portman's character having stage four cancer. And like I've never seen a cancer person before. It's so real. It's like we have, we have in a nutshell, we've pussified our country. Like we need to grow a pair. Like you have the guys storming the beaches of Normandy back when you had the Korean War, the Vietnam War. You had these just rough and tough Americans. And there's just people on the progressive left here in America that just get upset over everything. They too get upset over Twitter posts. They, as you just saw, the views getting all outraged over somebody fat shaming, a politician fat shaming another person because they're obese. And like if somebody calls you fat or obese, it's probably because you are. If you want to take shame from that, I'm sure that's subjective. That might, that might not even be the person's true intention. You can actually have a doctor tell you that you're obese or you're fat. Their intention is not to hurt your feelings or give you anxiety or anything of the nature. They're there to support you and provide you help to get healthier and get better. But the way that you take it isn't the other person's fault. It's your fault for taking it that way. But again, they want you to be thrown in jail as you see in England here. I mean, wrap your head around that. You say something to somebody that causes them anxiety over a, over a freaking social media feed and you're going to be arrested for it and thrown in jail. And the left one take it further where they want you thrown in prison because like I said, it's no different from you say fat shaming somebody. Say you called somebody fat or something like that. And there's no different from that language being compared to that, like you punching them in the face. That's how they correlate the two. They, they take it as an equivalency that you literally assaulted, you committed assault and battery basically to the person and that you should be thrown in prison, arrested, and maybe even fined. So this is what's going on in England as a possibility of rolling into the United States through the progressive left by infiltrating the Democrat party and pushing initiatives. And we can't say that's not going to happen because they've done the same thing 
by utilizing the progressive left, infiltrating the Democrat Party, and then trying to infringe upon our Second Amendment rights, which has happened time and time again. So there's the show for you, folks. Thank you so much for always supporting us here at the Bald Brad Show. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button. And thank you again so much for 10,000 subscribers. Let's try to get to another 10,000 more and even maybe 100,000 at some point in the future. Grow the show, grow the cause, grow the American Conservative Party. With that being said, folks, I will see you later here on the Bald Brad Show.